this side. And we have to figure out who is the mightiest of them and who is the wisest of them. They are both the hero of the story actually. We need them both for the very next story. Uh, but I have understood that always we need one king of Denmark and the other one who is the hero of the story. So can you decide it or do you have to fight for it? I have a very good battle here, you know, rock, paper, scissors. Uh -huh. On the count of three, you can battle it out. Would you like to? Let us try. One, two, three! Uh -huh. I think he won, Milan. It's fair and square. So, he will be the king of Denmark. Let us give him a round of applause. Well, this was not motivating, I have to tell you. So I took something with me that help, will help me out much more. <laughs> this is a proper throne for the King of Denmark. Aha. How does it feel? And we are empowered. <laughs> I feel empowered. Very good. Now you will take over the role of a king. So when I ask you something, you will have to say it like a king. Very good. And you have to be very quiet now. <laughs> this is your key to success. <laughs> so, for now, we have learned that on the year 1219, the brave King Valdemar II from Denmark, he came to these lands and after the successful battle, he did something that a proper man always does after a successful battle. So what do you usually do after all the fighting? Uh, first of all, just rebuild the whole town. Uh -huh. So the whole town, you start to develop it and build it. I think it's not all good with him, it's okay. <laughs> so before you could do any of it, you decide to organize a feast. You eat a bit too much, you drink a bit too much, you have too much fun. Yes? Very good. So he decides to jump on a horse. That's a pretty small horse. <laughs> so you jump on your horse, and you go out there. You go out there and you look to the left, you look to the right, and you don't see much. Only nature. Beautiful trees like we see now, nothing else. But suddenly you hear a noise coming from the bushes. Can you know what it is? Could it be a gust of wind? No, it was not. Could it be an Estonian counterattack? No. No, says the king uh, proudly. Would it be his angry wife waiting him after two years to finally get home? <laughs> Possibly, but the right answer here is always no. And finally, the true hero of our story, the deer. He pops his head out from the bush. You know, you look at the king. He looks at the king and the king. Wait a moment. <laughs> the deer, he looks at the king, and the king, you looked at the deer, and the deer, you looked back at the king. They were staring at each other like two lovers at full moon, when finally the king, not the king, the deer had so much sense that he jumped out of the bush. And you run away. <laughs> run away. Very good. My lord, you jump on your horse. And you go after the king. <laughs> and while they were running around and having fun, they came to a stop. Now the deer, you are standing up there, thinking, what shall I do? What can I do? But then you see the king being very angry. Come here. Well, he understood that there is not very many choices. So what do you do? You decide to jump. He jumps down from the very same cliff up there to a certain death. <coughs> My lord, this is a very brave move because no one else, no one else has, run away, has been running away from the king of Denmark. So the king of Denmark, Valdemar II, you are so impressed that even the nature here resists you so much that what you, what you decide to do you decide to call these lands after the very same event. Calling these lands Refal, meaning in Old Germanic, nothing else and nothing more than the fall of the deer. Re, meaning a deer, and fall, to fall. <laughs> so, my lord, give me your hand, my lord, give me your hand, other one. 
Very good. So the name of this town means literally nothing else than nothing more than the fall of the deer. I think it was very good. Oh, well. <laughs> I see you've been rehearsing. <laughs>